It's Platt, and today we head to Montana. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So uh, the particular beer we have today is Moose Rule Brown Ale. Comes with us from the fine folks at Big Sky Brewing. A uh, little background into Big Sky. Big Sky is located in Missoula, Montana, which I believe is the home of University of Montana. So it's kind of a college town, which makes it perfect for a brewery. Uh, the brewery was founded by uh, Neil Leathers, Brad Robinson, and hopefully I'm getting this name right, uh, Bjorn uh, Nabozini. Nabozni, I apologize, Bjorn, if you're listening, I gave her a good try. Um, the story dates back uh, all the way to 1990 when Neil and Brad moved out to Missoula from Michigan. They were already hardcore beer nerds and uh, had, had a true passion for beer. One of the first nights uh, in town they visited at the time what was the only uh, uh, brewery in town. I believe it's a uh, Barron Brewery. Hopefully I said that right. And they liked it, they enjoyed it, but they kind of realized, well, hey, wait a minute, we can do better. There should be something more. Uh, they're more into uh, the English style ales. And kind of the seed that was germinated for the brewery. Now, Neil and Brad, again, had a passion for brewing, but they did not have a passion or necessarily the knowledge for business. And that's where Bjorn came in. Bjorn was working on a degree in finance at the time. And eventually the business plan for Big Sky, uh, he actually wrote as part of a project, his last project in college, kind of his, I guess, thesis or whatever. Um, I actually did something similar when I was in grad school. Uh, we created a business plan for a, uh, it was gonna be a nightclub bar marketing site called Dallas Drinks. I did the same thing. Uh, I think I got a B on the paper, which, Got me, got me graduated, so I'll take it. Uh, anyway, they uh, Bjorn worked on this business plan while going to school. At the same time, Neil and Brad actually started a community uh, access show, uh, cable access TV show, about craft beer where they review and would talk about craft beer. So they kind of got their name out there and again, were developing their end of the business while Bjorn was uh, working on the business plan. Eventually, by 1995, uh, the business plan was complete. They got their money, uh, they got funding, and they end up opening uh, their first location on Hickory Street there in Missoula. Now, the original plan was this uh, brewery just to be a draft only, basically selling draft beer uh, in their bar and nothing else. However, after a while, they started getting a uh, little success, and they realized they probably wanted to grow into a regional brewery, and the only way they would do that is through bottle and canning. Now, their original location on Hickory Street was a little too small to put in a bottling line, so we, they ended up outsourcing or contracting with Portland Brewing Company to bottle and can for them. Uh, they took the additional revenue along with going out and uh, acquiring more funding and they took that to uh, start building a new production facility and you know, adding bottling and canning lines to that. Uh, eventually they end up building their current location today, uh, I believe roughly 24,000 square feet and they're producing over 40,000 barrels a year. So uh, now they do everything in house. That additional capacity as we'll talk about here in a little bit has allowed them to do more than just uh, beers also. Quickly, let's go over those uh, other products. Uh, Moose Drool, the beer we have today, is Big Sky's flagship beer. Uh, most people, if you bring up Big Sky Brewing, will automatically think of uh, Moose Drool. Uh, the beer is so popular that Northern Brewer, in one of their homebrew kits for their brown ale, uh, they call their beer Caribou Slobber as kind of an homage to Moose Drool. So as far as an American-made brown ale, Moose Drool is, is uh, one of the most re highly regarded. Um, next, they have a beer called uh, Hucket. It is a Huckleberry Blonde Ale. Now, if you get up to Montana, especially if you're coming out of Yellowstone into Montana, Arbor, Huckleberries everywhere, any kind of little gift shop stuff will have Huckleberry Jam, juices, extracts. Uh, they are Huckleberry crazy up there, so again, kind of fits with the uh, theme and, and the uh, location. Next, they have a beer called Powder Hound. It is a 6.5% ABV winter ale. Um, as you'll see in their beers, kind of a continuing theme of Montana, outdoors, nature, 
animals, you know, powder, obviously a reference to snow, uh, you know, the hounds outdoors. Next, they have a beer called Slow Elk. It is a 5% ABV oatmeal stout. Another thing you'll notice is, again, they didn't go just straight lager, you know, quote-unquote good old boy beer, or they didn't go the West Coast IPA route. They created beers that kind of work with the climate, you know, winter ale and oatmeal stout. Um, a little hardier climate up there needs probably a little hardier beer. Um, as we talked about earlier, when they added the canning and bottling lines, that gave them an opportunity to kind of expand the business. And uh, besides their line of beers, they also do four different flavors of hard cider and two different flavors of uh, sparkling water. So again, they've been able to expand the product line outside of beer too. Well, before we give this particular beer a try though, let's check out the stats. All right, so today I thought we would talk about Montana breweries. Um, it's summertime, time to get out, hit the road, road trip, see this uh, beautiful country of ours. And last summer I did the same thing when uh, you, some of you that watch the channel regularly may know my friend Jimmy. We hit the road and one of the places we hit was Montana. Absolutely beautiful country, wide open spaces, beautiful scenery, cool people, and um, I just want to suggest y'all, if you're getting out, seeing this country, head to Montana. Absolutely beautiful. And I thought today I would suggest a few breweries for you. Uh, first, we have Union Hall Brewing in Bozeman, Montana. We actually uh, stayed in Bozeman after we left uh, Yellowstone and stopped by Union Hall. Cool little brewery. One of the cool things about them is they're literally next door, or built kind of next door to uh, Bozeman Spirits, a distillery. I believe you can go into both locations through one door. A uh, real cool vibe. Again, a, a, a booze nerd like me just loves something like that. Uh, if I remember right, I tried the Amber Ale and I was impressed with it. So again, if you're in Bozeman, check out Union Hall Brewing. Uh, next is Muddy Creek Brewing in Butte, Montana. Butte is, I want to say, an hour, a couple hours uh, west of Bozeman, right as you're starting to get the western part of the state, up in the mountains. Beautiful country there, too. Uh, third, we have Montana Brewing Company. That is in Billings. That is a little east of Bozeman, uh, like you're heading toward the Dakotas, a little more flat territory. Uh, Montana Brewing is built next door to a place called Hooligan Sports Bar. If I ever opened a brewery, I would love to have a neighbor named Hooligans. I just thought that those are probably my kind of people there. And uh, last but not least, Great Northern Brewery in uh, Whitefish, Montana. Whitefish is in northwest uh, Montana, uh, not too far from the Canadian border, but more importantly, next door to Glacier National Park. Now, we did not get a chance to go to Glacier National Park last year, and uh, we were still in the lockdown kind of phase. Also, too, they had parts of the park closed for different work. Um, but just the pictures I've seen, absolutely gorgeous. Everybody in Montana told us you've got to get up there, and it's definitely on the bucket list. And if I get up there, we're definitely gonna stop by and see the fine folks at Great Northern Brewery. Well, enough about Montana beers. Let's give this Montana beer a try. dark brown. Um, this is going to be a little darker than your uh, Newcastle, uh, but stylistically similar. Got about a finger of lightish khaki head. Plenty of malt on the nose. Let's give her a try. Oh, that's nice. Get a little a little malt sweetness up front, and then those uh, dark malts kind of start hitting toward the back. Uh, there's some sweetness, but there's also a little bit of a bite. Uh, when you get to the darker malts, you start picking up some espresso, coffee notes, uh, dark coffee. Um, and you get that, um, again, compared to a lot of other brown ales or little uh, milder brown ales that may be more on the sweet end. Again, this has more of a dark malt bite. Uh, again, in that espresso coffee vein. Uh, the beer 
medium minus body. Um, it's not mouth feeling, but it, there is some weight. There's some substance to it. Um, a nicely executed beer. Um, again, easy drinking enough, but it's something of substance. It's something... Um, this is definitely not a summertime chugger, but it's something I think you can enjoy year round though. Um, like I said, I, I can definitely see where this again fits the location. You want something a little more, a little more substance. Again, you're in a hardier climate. Um, just, uh, just a good solid executed beer. This is why it's probably one of the most popular brown ales uh, produced here in the U.S. Just a good solid brew. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.